Welcome to your English 8 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. These videos assume that you understand many literary concepts taught in 7th grade. If you feel uncertain about these concepts from then, feel free to review 7th grade videos. Okay? Let's go! Today's short fiction concept video deals with imagery and mood in setting. Let's begin by reviewing the definition of setting. Setting is the time and place of a story, and even though that seems fairly simple, and readers often take it for granted, setting can be enormously complex and very powerful in the development of a story. Setting helps the reader understand the rules of the story, it helps the reader understand the nature of characters, and it creates mood. In fact, setting helps you understand how the story should play out. It creates the world and the rules within that world. But today, we will not focus on all of those functions. Instead, we will only focus on the development of mood. Let's review a little bit more. Setting exists on three levels, historical, physical, and cultural. The historical level of setting is the time in which the setting is, exists. The physical level is the place in which the setting occurs, and the cultural level is the culture of the people of that setting. Again, we will not focus on all levels of setting, only focusing on the physical with today's discussion. In order to understand the physical setting and the power that it has to create mood, we must review two concepts, imagery and mood. Let's take some time in reviewing these. Imagery is defined as words used to convey information from the five senses. We are human beings. We use language. We use words, both spoken and written. As we speak or write words, we often use those powerful instruments to describe what we feel, what we see, what we taste, what we touch, and what we hear. Every time we use words to convey those sense impressions, we are using imagery. It could be as simple as a color. I could describe my chair as black, or I could describe the weather outside as sunny. Those words are imagery because they describe the way something looks. I could discuss the feeling of something as smooth, or as rough, or as spiky. Those words also convey sense impressions. In this sense, they, conv they convey touch. Any word that conveys a sense impression is imagery, and authors depend upon imagery because they are dealing only with text. If an author wants to convey a space, an author must use imagery to convey that space physically for an audience. Let's move to mood. Mood is simply the emotion felt by the reader through a story. As a story develops, readers might feel one way or another about it, about the events within the story, about the characters, but an author would like to carefully control and direct the mood felt by the reader. And often the author uses imagery to develop that mood, and the imagery is usually connected to physical setting. So the principle is simple. The imagery of the physical setting develops the mood of the story. Whenever an author uses imagery in the physical setting, that author is probably trying to develop some sort of emotional response within their audience seem pretty simple, seem a little bit confusing? Well, fine. Let's take a look at examples. These examples will come from our reading of The Monkey's Paw. Let's read. From the first line, Jacobs writes, Without, the night was cold and wet, but in the small parlor of Labernum Villa, the blinds were drawn and the fire burned brightly. As we read this line, we see a number of pieces of imagery. Cold and wet describes how the night feels, and as we think about a cold and wet night, we also get a visual impression of darkness. Fire burned brightly helps us understand how the room inside the villa feels and looks. We get a sense of light and a sense of warmth. That first image, the cold and wet night, might make us feel miserable and uncomfortable. Whereas the second image of the fire burning brightly might make us feel happy in this inviting and safe environment. This one sentence contains two distinct sets of imagery connected to the physical setting, creating two different moods. Let's look at more examples from Jacob's The Monkey's Paw. 
On page 91 also, Mr. White states, of all the beastly, slushy, out-of-the-way places to live in, this is the worst. Pathways a bog and the roads a torrent. We can see a few pieces of imagery within Mr. White's statement. Beastly and slushy, once again, convey a sense of image to a certain extent, but definitely feeling. Pathways a bog will do the same, and the roads a torrent will keep that image going. We know the setting is miserable and uncomfortable. The environment outside the villa is definitely not a place that you want to be. But let's move further into the monkey's paw for one more example from page 100. This describes the interior of the house nearing the climax of the story. The candle end, which had burned below the rim of the china candlestick, was throwing pulsating shadows on the ceiling and walls until, with a flicker larger than the rest, it expired. While we could say a lot about this sentence, we should draw our attention to the pulsating shadows and the expiration of the candle. This helps us see the darkness within the environment and helps us feel a bit frightened and a bit unsafe. The discomfort earlier developed in the story escalates to fear and threat at this point. And that fear and threat is conveyed and developed through the imagery. If you wanted to discuss this conclusion about Jacob's The Monkey's Paw, you might write an imagery analysis. An imagery analysis is one of the simplest literary analyses to write, because all you must do is identify the imagery through quotations and then explain what emotions are developed by it. You might lead such an imagery analysis with a clear statement like this. In The Monkey's Paw, Jacob's builds a mood of discomfort and threat through the description of the setting. This claim is followed up by evidence, which is a discussion of specific words and phrases of imagery, such as we saw in the preceding slides. Imagery of the outside of the house from early in the story and the inside of the house later in the story will help us discuss and explain how Jacobs builds this mood of discomfort and threat. All we need to do for the rest of this paragraph is quote from the story and then identify individual words and their powerful emotions. An imagery analysis can be one of the simplest analyses to write for literature, and students often succeed with it very well. If you want to write an imagery analysis, simply read the story carefully, looking for imagery. Look for the way the author describes the physical setting, and think about what emotions may wish to be conveyed by the author through that imagery.